I was reading a biology to make some bio videos in Khan Academy and I came across these different names, glyconeogenesis, glycogenolysis. I remember studying about them when I was studying in when I was in high school and being extremely confused about it. But having taught physics for such a long time, I thought I understood logic. And so for a second, I thought, hmm, I've got this. This makes logical sense. But then I thought a little bit more and then I realized, oh my God, it doesn't make any sense. And I started ranting about how the naming system should be. I came up with my own <laughs> naming system of how all of those things should be. But eventually, after thinking even a little bit more, I realized that guess what? It actually makes perfect logical sense. And I think my brain groove. And therefore, I wanted to share this with you. I think by the end of this video, you will have a perfect understanding of what these terms mean, what is the exact naming system. I also want to take you to the journey of what I initially thought was wrong, and then what I thought should be right, and then why, how eventually I realized what, how everything makes sense. So that this is a story of more about logic rather than actually biology. I'm only going to be talking about how these naming systems actually make sense. All right, let's begin. All right, my biggest confusion came when I was looking at these two terms and trying to understand the logic behind them. So let's just focus on them for a second. So what does glycogenesis mean? Well, if you break the word, you can hear, you can see that there is glyco in it. Let me write a little small, glyco. And there is a genesis, plus genesis, right? And so glyco stands for glycogen, and so let me just write that down so we have everything clear. So glyco is glycogen and genesis means creation. Genesis is creation. And so I thought this should logically mean glycogen creation. And guess what? That makes sense. This is glycogen creation. Perfect. Then I went to glycolysis. Well, by the same logic, I thought glycolysis would be glyco, which is glycogen, plus lysis. Lysis means breaking things down. So this is breaking. And therefore, glycolysis should be breaking down glycogen. And I was feeling smart about myself. But then I looked up the definition of glycolysis, and guess what? Glycolysis is not breaking down of glycogen, Glycolysis is breaking down of glucose. <laughs> and this was my frustration. I was like, how does that make any sense? Like there's a word glyco in it. How does it make sense to say that this is breaking down of glucose? It should be breaking down of glycose, um, glycogen, right? So, they sh so my frustration was they're not using this word glyco consistently. And again, coming from some, from physics background, this irked me. I couldn't just say, fine, let me just accept that, I couldn't do it. I thought there's something inherently wrong with the naming system. And therefore, I started coming up with my own naming system. You know what I thought? This shouldn't be called glycolysis. I thought this should be called glucolysis. <laughs> you should call this glucolysis if it's breaking down of glucose, right? So that was what I was thinking. Another question that I was having was, in this entire term, right? There is no such thing as glucogenesis, right? Creation of glucose, glucogenesis term does not exist. I mean, there is something called gluconeogenesis, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Don't look at this for now. Just look at this. If glycogenesis exists, which is creation of glycogen, why doesn't glucogenesis exist? Creation of glucose, that term doesn't exist at all. These were the problems I was having, and I came up with my own naming system where I add, this was called glucolysis. Then I had glucogenesis and all of those things. And by the way, let me just write down what I had in mind. I thought gluco stands for glucose, which makes perfect sense in my head. And therefore I came up with this naming system and all of that, and I was super happy. And I was like, I was like, okay, biology makes no sense, but guess what? Then I thought a little bit more deeply. And then I realized, what my mistake was. Now you wanna know what my mistake was? <laughs> okay. My mistake was, in fact, and by the way, before I go over there, let me tell you, the naming system is actually really more clever than I gave, gave it credits for. It's really, really, I have a newfound appreciation for this naming system. So let's, let me tell you why. Glycogenesis is not glyco plus genesis. That was my mistake. 
This is wrong. You know, this was my biggest mistake. Glycogenesis, the way to think about it is glycogen plus genesis. That's how you should think about it. Glycogen plus genesis because glycogen genesis, and we don't want to call it gen genesis, and therefore we combine them together to just call, just have one gen, so we say glycogenesis. And so the mistake I made was glyco is not the short form for glycogen. This is wrong. Glycogen has no short form. Glycogen will be just glycogen. This is what it's going to be. And I know at this point, there was a part of my brain that was actually saying, but Mahesh, this is like hindsight by us. Because you already know, you're just cooking up things. How do you know that this is wrong? Like some, someone looking at this logically, could say both of these are correct. How can one possibly know, how can, one, how can you possibly argue that glyco plus genesis is wrong? You can't look at it that way. And guess what, this is the clever part of it. I will show you later on that it doesn't ever make sense to think of it as glyco plus genesis. You have to wait for a while because it's really clever. But anyways, let me give you some confidence in this naming system, all right? Okay, now don't look below, don't look below. Let me ask you, what would you call a uh, breaking of glycogen? Just from this naming system, what would you call breaking of glycogen? Well, it is glycogen lysis. Breaking is lysis. Glycogen lysis, so you would call breaking of glycogen as glycogen lysis or glycogenolysis. See, this makes sense. Breaking of glycogen, so let me just write that down, glycogen plus lysis. So this is breaking of glycogen. And so now if we summarize, because glycogen will always be called glycogen, breaking of glyco gly glycogen is glycogenolysis, creation of glycogen is glycogengenesis, which is glycogenesis, okay? All right, so now comes the question, what's going on over here? And what's going on over here? So going back, gluco is glucose. But you know what glyco really is? What is glyco, you know? If you look at the term glyco, which comes from the Greek word, or I think Latin, I don't remember which one now, one of them, <laughs> it means, it comes from the Greek word sugars. In fact, you know what, That's, let, let's write that down over here. It comes from the Greek word sugars. So glyco means sugars in general. It could mean glucose, but it could also mean fructose. It could also mean galactose. It could mean any isomers of glucose. That's what glyco is. And that's why I find this naming system super powerful and, and super clever. So we have three things. We have gluco, that stands for specifically the glucose sugar. We have glyco, that comes from the Latin word or the Greek word, which I don't remember which one that is, but it comes, it's called sugars, which means it can be glucose, but it can be in general any sugar, any isomer of glucose. And then when we're talking about glycogen, we will always specifically refer to it as glycogen. And so with that in mind, let's now go back and look at what is glycolysis. Well, glyco is sugars. Oops, let me use the color. Sugars. And therefore, glycolysis means breaking of sugars. And if you look at it, that's what it means. It is breaking down of glucose. That makes sense because glucose is a part of sugar. But guess what? Breaking down of fructose also is glycolysis. So when you're breaking down sugars to actually get energy, we call that as glycolysis. Now it makes perfect sense. And then finally, what does gluconeogenesis mean? What is this whole neo business? Well, neo, let me just pink color, color that a little bit. Let me use dark pink for that. All right, so, all right. So neo comes from Matrix. <laughs> My favorite movie is named Matrix, by the way. Okay, but anyways, neo, comes from new. So if you break it down, what this means 
is, let me just write that. This means we have, um, where's my green? You have gluco, then you have neo, and then you have genesis. So what would that mean? This is creation, new creation of glucose, which basically means you're creating glucose from a new source altogether. See, usually you get glucose by breaking down glycogen, um, but if, you, if glycogen is not available, if your body is starving, you can also break some other things down. You can also create glucose from other stuff, and therefore we call that as gluconeogenesis. That makes sense to me. You're creating glucose from a completely new source all together. And notice we're using gluco here and not glyco because you're specifically talking about glucose and not talking about any other sugars. So I don't know about you, but this naming system makes perfect sense to me. And now eventually we can go back to our original question. Our original question was why even with this naming system, why we can't say that glycogenesis means glyco plus genesis, meaning creation of sugars. Why can't we say that? We know it's wrong right now because we are looking at it backwards, but why doesn't that make any sense? And the reason is, here's the reason. We will never have a term called creation of sugars. So let me just write that down, okay? Sugars creation. We will never have a term for this. You know why? Because sugars can be created by multiple sources. For example, you can get glucose by breaking down glycogen, or you can get glucose from a different new source, right? If I just make a term called sugar creation, then that would cause confusion because I don't know which is the source of this sugar. Is it coming from glycogen or is it coming from a different source? And therefore I think it makes perfect sense to, to not have, um, to, to not have uh, a name, a, a, a name for, general name for sugar's creation. And therefore when I look at glycogenesis and when I first try to attempt to see that it is glycoplasgenesis, sugar creation, I immediately know that that doesn't make sense. Because sugars can be created by multiple sources, it's not telling me what is the source. It doesn't tell me the source. And that's why when it comes to sugar's creation, you have two very specific terms. You have glycogenesis, which is glycogen genesis. You break down glycogen, and guess what? When you break down glycogen, what do you get? you get glucose. So this is the term, one way in which you can create sugars. Or you can get another way of creating sugars, which is by, from some new sources. So this is also giving you sugar. So this is also giving you glucose in general. And that's why glycogenesis can never be glycoplasgenesis. And that's why we'll also have no such term as glucogenesis this term would not exist. Again, earlier I thought this term should exist, but now I know it doesn't exist, or, and it shouldn't exist, because if I just say glucogenesis, I, you wouldn't know whether that glucose is coming from glycogen, or whether that glucose is coming from some other source. I don't know that. And therefore, we have very specific terms, either glycogenesis or gluconeogenesis. And this is why I think I, it makes all, everything makes perfect sense, and I think my brain has grown. I don't expect you to get it immediately because I didn't, and I think that's the beauty of it. We usually think that, you know, learning is about making things as simple as possible, and then learning everything, and everything should be easy, but learning is not an easy process. In fact, when you are confused, that's a really good thing, because that means that you're digging a little bit deeper and trying to understand exactly what's going on. So I had that exact same journey, but after I came out of that confusion, it was making so much sense. I could have just, you know, said that, hey, glycolysis is sugars breaking down, let me just accept it, and things would have been easy. But I didn't take the easy path, and I hope you don't take the easy path as well. And I would love to hear your comments about, did this make sense to you? Did this confuse you? Because either ways, it's good. Keep learning, my dear friends.